Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tar Tarot and Rune for the 28th day of October 2019. Well, it's interesting. We have a one energy for the month still, because we're not in November yet, not till Thursday. And we have a one energy for today, so that's kind of cool. Monday's all about new beginnings, evidently. I think it was the same in the weekly rune and moon, too. Was it? Yeah, Monday and Friday had a one energy, I think, as well. Uh, so we have... Uh, that's up on the blog, by the way. And, and it basically... Uh, Lots of uh, maybe, un, you know, breaking through different things or new directions taken or something uh, over the course of the week. I, I like that the week sort of tends to flow one thing into the next, which is kind of interesting. I like when you can get a sense of flow to things. And, and it just seems to me that, that I think in terms of weeks instead of days, I think in terms of, of weeks, not even months, but... I don't know. Maybe you do that when you when you have a job. I don't know. You get you get week oriented. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, so that's up, and uh, some correspondences and astro information are up. So there'll be some more that goes up today. Uh, I still have not done the burdock post, so I'm going to do that as well, probably today or tomorrow, because that stuff turned out really well. Anyway. Let's see, what else? Well, we've got the sun in the 11th house of Scorpio. So again, passionate relationships today, <laughs> you know, or passionate approach to relationships. You know, you might uh, be pretty, Scorpio is pretty intense. And so, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, they're just a little too intense for their own good. So anyway, the moon was new yesterday uh, in Scorpio. And uh, again, you know, <laughs> you might want to set your intentions surrounding relationships with people, maybe improving them or, or what have you. Or maybe just checking in with family. You know, uh, Halloween's on Thursday. It's also Samhain for uh, the pagan community and the witch community. And so it's the time when, when the veil is thinning and, and theoretically we can communicate with ancestors. It happens twice a year. It happens in May as well. You know, during the 1st of May at Beltane or Beltana, however you wish to pronounce that one. But it's just a time where where uh, the veil is thinnest and we can communicate with loved ones past. That their messages of love and, and harmony and support can, can reach us. So be thinking about that, all those who have passed on before you. And how they still impact your lives today. We have a, a sun is up is opposing Uranus today, so we might it means that we might feel compelled to advance unconventional ideas. Uh, let's see, what do we have in the first house? Oh, a couple things. Uh, Saturn has moved into the first house, uh, and one thing that you know Saturn slows things down, but the other thing it also does is it allows things to come to fruition, maybe, and. Uh, uh, we might see plans or efforts that we've been, you know, kind of working on of late, maybe come into fruition today or or uh, uh, be rewarded somehow. Uh, let's see. Oh, still Pisces and Virgo uh, intercepted today. So communications might be difficult. Goals might be unrealistic. Um, third house is communication. Uh, ninth house is also affected. Uh, Mercury, we're going to be coming up on retrograde beginning on the 31st through the 20th. And so be aware that, you know, you know, you know the same old stuff ha you know, that everyone says, don't buy electronics, don't sign contracts, don't. Anytime something's in retrograde, it gives you a chance to sort of, you know, uh, maybe be a little more careful, uh, maybe take stock, maybe reflect inner, do some inner work. Uh, when, when Jupiter is in retrograde, for example, you want to focus on, instead of expansive energy outward, you want to turn that inward. And so for some people, you know, electronics don't function very well during this time. I've, I've had that happen to me a few times, but uh, uh, I think I impact my electronics more than anything else does. So anyway, I think that my energy is just so strong that, that it, it I, I don't know. I had, I had a, a, a place where... 
a, a series of computers where I was every time I was near them. Uh, well, it was when I was ill. I was I was producing positive voltage instead of negative voltage. And so I was shocking everything and everyone. And I, I really think it was it, the interaction with the computer and me that blew out the power supplies. I blew out three of them. I did. So I and I and I, I used to just think it was because we had questionable power in our in, in the area we were in, but I don't think so because it wasn't happening to anyone else. And I was shocking everything and everyone at that time. This went on for years, the whole time I was sick, but you see, I was also retaining a whole bunch of fluid. And so I would imagine that that was part of it as well. I just wasn't getting grounded at all. And I was so ill that, that I don't know, the voltage changed. It's, it's weird. My husband one day just he had a voltmeter in his hand. He touched me with the leads, right? And, and, and he's like, whoa, look at that. It was like, it was like positive seven. You aren't supposed to run that. You aren't supposed to be positive seven. You're supposed to be in the negative range, apparently. Because I went and I looked it up. I'm like, oh, what does that mean? And so I thought, is that significant, you know? And, and sure enough, it is. So it does indicate ill health. So I was really, really sick back then. So anyway. We have Mercury conjunct uh, Venus, so conversations should flow well today, although Mars is still in Libra, so watch any controlling. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, don't, don't be controlling. I've been saying that now for a few days because Mars is still in Libra. Tenth house, I think, too. Uh, so, so work, again, is, I think it's still in the tenth house. I didn't look, though. Um, but, uh, you know... Not everybody needs your authority and your and your leadership skills when you're ready to give them. Uh, so just kind of check the tone of the room and make sure, check in with people and make sure that it's really that they're really ready to receive what you're what you're offering. Let's just put it that way. So, oh yes, Mars is still squaring Saturn. Uh, patience and self discipline. Again, try not to control. Uh, inward balance is necessary before you do any of that. Let's see if there was anything else I noted when I looked at things today. I think that's it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm getting started late today. I'm not sure why. But in any event, let's go ahead and take our first three cards and talk about them. And then we'll decide if we need a fourth. And if we don't, we'll move on to the Elder Futhark rune. And then we'll create a geomancy rune to close with. So I take the 13th card each time for randomness sake. I was born on the 13th, so I just do that. You don't have to. It's just my thing that I do here. If I'm just doing regular readings, I just shuffle and lay them all out. So anyway, we have the Nine of Wands is the first card. A little bit uneasy truce there, maybe. Uneasy support, not quite so sure. <laughs> A lot of will behind you. Not quite sure what it's doing, maybe. But things seem to have come to completion. Let's do another card. We have the Knight of Swords. So some swift action. Swift uh, conversation. Uh, that might end up going first. I don't know. That's the other thing that we're going to do here is uh, we can move our cards around. Even when you're, especially if you've got court cards and, and they need to talk to one another, you know, or you feel like, hey, I think they're having a conversation, but they're not together, so they can't. You can move your cards around and, and, and make this tell the story you, 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 that, that it seems to, to, to tell. You know, just because you lay them down in an order doesn't mean that's the order they're supposed to be in. Even in, in, in defined spreads, you can still do that. If something just seems wrong, that shouldn't be there. That should be there, and then it's going to make some sense. Move your cards around. your reading well we have the ten of cups I think I mentioned this one and I said this was the t I said it was the guy with that sits in front of the, the the cups behind him that's actually the nine of cups this is ten of cups we see the family and the kids dancing there mom and dad are are uh, holding their arms up in celebration for the life that they've created they have Tremendous emotional fulfillment, you know, and, and you have the rainbow up there and the 10, which reduces to one. So that's new beginnings that aligns with today. But but what it also does, what it also signifies, it's like you almost like you're you've established your 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 
your home, you've established your your tradition, and now you can walk under the rainbow, walk through that arch and into that experience. It, it's it's almost like that as well. So it has that sense of of movement through, in other words, and a movement into emotional fulfillment that, that you know, it, I mean, it also involves the earth element here because it's about your, your home and your family and your structure and your foundation. But it's telling us that that is it, that you're achieving emotional fulfillment with that. We might need a fourth card here. But let's look at this. We've got, uh, let's see, number wise, we're still at a one. Nine and ten is nineteen, and that equals nine and one is ten. That equals and one and zero is one. So we're still at a one energy for the reading. So we're going to align with today's uh, numerology. So we'll, I think we may leave it here. I think what I think we're going to also leave it in the order that it is. All right. So here we have the nine of, of wands. Wands is the fire element. It's about our will, creativity, inspiration. Uh, it can also be intuition at times. It depends on on how you see it. Sometimes the the uh, sometimes intuition is is uh, assigned to the water element, but some people assign it to to fire as well. That creative spark, that creative intuitive spark. I think intuition comes from a variety of places, but I think it's a body-oriented thing. I think it's a form-oriented experience. I think that the empath part of us, the emotional resonance that we feel that if you're empathic, that I think is the soul energy. And I think when you start to get into your your abilities, if you want to call them that, which I don't, but if you want if you want to think of it that way, because that's how people generally talk about them. You know, the Claire abilities, Claire sentience, Claire audience, that kind of stuff, uh, intuition. That's about the experience we're having here. It's in response to. So it's empath stuff. It's that empathic awareness that sort of focuses in in one type of channel of experience, basically. So, so that's why I say some people actually view uh, the fire element as also indicative of intuition. So anyhow. It just depends on how you want to manifest that. But here, you know, he's been through a battle and, you know, he's looking back behind him and uh, he's the one that won. He's out in front. Now, you can either look at this as the ending of some conflict or an ending of a battle of wills and you've come out in front, maybe. You've come out on top. You've sort of won the argument, maybe. Or maybe yours is the way forward. Everybody's going to go and everybody's behind you, right? But he's not so sure, is he? Still, the battle seems to be over. Now, you could possibly put this one first, the Knight of Swords. Here you have swift action. You see movement. It's the air element. It's, it's, it's the air element. I'll enunciate better there. Uh, it's it's our, our intellect. It's our reason. It's balance. It's justice. But something happened, right? Now... You can either, so some new information is coming in, having to do not about the future, but about what's been going on. So you can see where this could theoretically go first. And then with the, with the nine of wands, then maybe that comes next. And we're, we're having to, we, we, all right, we've got the new information. We've, uh, you know, now we know what we know, right? And we were right. So it doesn't really matter. Those two can, you can start with a nine and then new information comes in or new information comes in that calms down the situation. And now, you know, things are becoming a little more clear. You see a definite, you see a definite line between them though, right down here. You see this, well, I'll show it over here. You see this right here. You see a definition there, don't you? A definition between where he is and the struggle. You see the mountains behind indicating struggle. So it's like he's now on the other side of the struggle, possibly because he's gotten some new information. So let's start with this card. See how easy that is? And now we need a fourth card, don't we? We need to know what goes in between the two. We need to know what goes in between the nine and the ten. But maybe the ten is simply the outcome. That now that we've gotten this uneasy truce here, will-wise, we can move on into fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. But it just seems like we're missing a card, doesn't it? Like one more step is there. Let's try.
wait a minute, how many did I just do? Let me count that again. Here, I'll just put it behind. I lost count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It felt like I counted too many. It's like I, like I passed 13 a long time ago. So, well, the Hierophant. Definitely a change. And we're going to put that, there's the change. Five is change. In a sense, we've got the middle way here with the Hierophant. We've got, we've got, uh, 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 you've got a balance, a level of balance here, almost like the scales. Um, but let me look something up here with the Hierophant. Here, this is a soul archetype card, and sometimes it takes having that to come in to really um, change how we see things. Divine wisdom, mastery of three worlds, knowledge, tradition, structure, yeah, 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 yeah. Need for social approval, free choice. No, 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 no. Enlightened teacher, transmission. No. Well, intuition. Inner guidance. Guru, teacher. So, okay. I think we'll take that, that, that tax. So maybe after the nine, we needed a little bit of clarity. Okay. I mean, he's not really happy, is he? Um, although... The information has given him what he needs to know, and now he's de he's decided where he's going to stand with it. Maybe speak truth to power. With the with the hierophant though, we see the tri triple aspects here: knowledge, tradition, and structure. We see the three over here. We see the three ticks on his on his uh, uh, scepter, if you will. The three lines there, the three levels. You see him on the crown as well. You see, uh, you see them represented with the three crosses here. You see the element of three, one, two, and three as well. You see one, two, and three down here. Again, you see the Y here, one, two, three, uh, on the back of on the back of their garment here, their 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 clothing. The monks that sit before him. You see the cross keys. He's not holding a Torah in his hand, though, unfortunately. But he's basically got two fingers pointed towards spirit, doesn't he? With three, is or is it one? Is it one pointed towards? No, no, no. He's got three towards spirit and two toward form. If you look very, very closely, you see the thumb and two fingers pointing to spirit. Where it all originates. And then you see the two pillars there, the middle way, if you will, the balance of dark and light. If you want to look at this in terms of intuition, something happened here. It was a little bit more than simply new information. You know, he seems pensive here. He seems to be worried. Like, I'm just not so sure. So I need a little more information. And so he got that. He either sought out an enlightened teacher. He sought out somebody that he trusted. Or he went within and 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 aligned in source presence and allowed that to, and allowed spirit or higher self to inform his process. And once he did that, see, he could move past whatever drama was going on and he could live in emotional fulfillment. Come into happiness and balance. And in a sense, you know, given that this is a young family, you know, in a sense, they're just starting out, aren't they, on their journey. And now whatever was causing them, causing him worry over something like that has now given way to something that's positive. So on a very basic level, what this reading could be telling us is maybe we've got some issues that we're worried about. And, and we've got some new facts that have come in that seem to have maybe, okay, maybe brought us into some kind of a decision, you know, maybe sort of narrowed down our choices maybe about what we want to do. Maybe we've made a final decision. Maybe we're not so, you know, sure about it, but, you know, so maybe we're going to seek out maybe some legal advice maybe, or maybe if you have a spiritual advisor or a, a trusted friend or a parent or something like that where, where maybe we go and we talk to somebody just to get a little bit more information just to make sure we're on the right track. And so that our outcome, whatever it is that we're trying to do here, that we're so worried about, that maybe it's not going not gonna to happen for us, 
you know, maybe this is about our family. Maybe this is again about establishing our, our, our family structure, you know, growing that family. Maybe we have, you know, maybe we have young kids and, and we're just trying to figure out how do we create a life for them, you know? You don't have to have all the answers. That's another theme of this. You don't have to have all the answers. You know, sometimes you have to go and ask for help. You have to ask for someone else's opinion. You know, have you ever experienced this? What would you say? What would you do in a situation like this? You don't have to necessarily take their advice, but seeking it out, they may say something that might trigger something. Even if it's, even if you end up doing something that they, that they don't ever talk about, there could be something that they say, right, that triggers you in the right direction. So. on this moon day, this emotional moon day in Scorpio. <laughs> the Knight of Swords could be a little bit intense that way too. Um, could be a Scorpio card. I don't know, I'll have to look. If What what has a sign, maybe, maybe I've written it down. Let me look real quick before I show you the rune. Let's see if I've written that down, tell you, tell you what this is actually the, uh, planetary energy involved here yeah take a risk i didn't write it down well you know i need to do that though because it's always nice to know the planetary energies that are assigned to these things but anyway we have thor's ass which is breaking through thor's hammer the thorn third rune of the elder futhark so it's catalytic with a three energy it's basically comprised of isa and Kenaz turned inward, Kenaz reversed, so light of spirit turned inward, single line for Isa, and then the and then Kenaz is 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 Kenaz is actually drawn this way. And it's the light of spirit expressing outward, right? But when it's pointed inward, it means that spirit's informing you. And so the 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 defense is a means of 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 protection. Uh uh, that's another interpretation of Thuris as, but it's it's it can be used in in in, in magics magical workings involving weather working, for example. So it can like break, it can bust through clouds. Uh, I did one one time. I wrote a spell one time where I, I was I, I needed the clouds to go away. It looked like it was going to rain, so I, I wrote a spell that included Thuris as. I went out and I chanted it, and the clouds moved. I don't know. It worked. So, you know, you've got, you've got Thor's hammer, you know, it's, it's, it's thought to be to represent Molnir. Uh, and so it's the, so if you think the power of Thor's hammer, sure, it can be done, used in offensive action, but typically it's used in defense. Thor defends, right? But it can mean that there was a breakthrough, likely having to do with this. We know what we know now, right? Leading to this. So I would say that Thurisaz provides then the impetus between the Knight of Swords and the Nine of Wands to actually get us in the direction we need to go. Um, that's the other thing. It's very stimulating. Um, in, in a way, it's like Hagalaz, you know, where it's destruction in preparation for change. That's the meaning of Hagalaz, or destruction in, uh, within a fixed framework. Now, with Thurizaz, it's going to be a little more chaotic, you know. Um, you're, you're ready for the whole thing to just come apart, right, so that you can then clear apart the clutter and build anew. And in a sense, that's what this feels like, either through, you know, the respect of someone else, you know, that, that's, that's guiding us or, or something. Well, here we have Caput Draconis here today. Let's see if I get these in the right order. Doesn't really matter at this point, but Caput Draconis for our Geomancy rune for today. Well, let's get something that you can actually see. That's too big. No. Well, I guess it's going to have to be that. The Draconi, the Caput Draconis, and the and the Cauda Draconis align with the north and south nodes of the moon. Now, north north the north node of the moon deals with the present moment and the future in terms of our life. The south node deals with past life influences, and so Caput is about new beginnings. It's got a passive influence for fire, an active influence for air, water, and earth. So you see the dual dot for fire and the single dot for everything else. 
almost like we are focusing into form to live our life in a way. But it talks about new beginnings, which aligns well with the one energy for today. Uh, ultimately here, oh God, I have to do math in my head, don't I? Oh, well, we had a one energy with the nine and the 10. Uh, that equals, that comes down to one with the five that comes down to six. So that's higher self energies. So higher self informing the whole process, again, aligning well with the hierophant. But it's indicative that if we allow higher self to inform our decisions, our choices, our vision, how, our perceptions, you know, because once we get into form, everything's perception. So then if you're, you know, if you're uh, empathically aware, if you're still retaining that sense of, of soul awareness, basically, then you kind of experience another layer of this, right? You're sort of experiencing, with the Knight of Swords, you're experiencing the swift change and the swift movement, you know, of ideas that are floating around. And you're watching them. And you're feeling the emotional resonance behind them. Because first we feel, you know, and then we think about that feeling, and then we do something, right? So when we experience the Nine empathically... It's a feeling that, okay, something's not finished. I'm here, and I know what I know, but yeah, something's back there, right? So we align within. Try to get some wisdom. Try to get some understanding. Try to get some knowledge, right? Try to feel in to what's really going on. And to try to know what's in people's hearts, basically. If you know what's there then it makes it a little bit easier to predict what they're going to do, you know? If you feel with, say, an energy vampire, someone who is is not just needy, you know, and have has, you know, unhealthy boundaries because they're needy, they're upset or, you know, they're going through a difficult time or something. Maybe we, I mean, we've all been there, you know, maybe we reach out a little too much or whatever. Well, an empath's going to feel that. It's going to be, it's going to feel sticky and, and, and vampiric, maybe. They don't mean it that way, and we know that, right? But then you have the ones that do mean it, that, that are vampiric, that are intentionally bothering you. They're focusing their attention on you, and you feel it. And you're like, it's kind of this. It's like vampires knocking at the door, maybe, right? So you might feel that as well today. But you also may have a chance to move away from that and find your own emotional fulfillment within, if you have to. And then manifest that outward so that other people can experience that as well. We forget that. We forget that we don't just receive, we also project. And if we're feeling things, so are other people, whether they identify as empathic or not, whether they understand what they're experiencing or not. We all experience it. It's our default state, right? With Thuris as though, you're going to break through the paradigm. You're going to break through the noise. You're going to break through the energy. And you're going to find your center. Because if you can't, then you're no good to anybody. You know, you really aren't. So that's interesting because basically it all comes down to a six energy or a higher self or, or harmony, harmony with others, shared purpose with others. Maybe that had been lost here. And maybe we're seeing a little bit of an ending. It might be an uneasy truce. It may feel like, you know, there's a lot of stuff still, you know, maybe there. But with inner wisdom, we can move out of that and we can find our way back to unity and love and happiness, shared abundance, shared joy, shared purpose, because that's the other aspect of the Ten of Cups is shared purpose and shared joy. And no, the guy sitting against a wall with happy with himself, that's the nine. I don't know why I said that was the ten. I thought it was the ten, but it's not. It's the nine. <laughs> Thank you.
but it relates because it's 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 almost like it's what he's built. You know, you have the you have the the cups on the back of a wall, so it's like he's built his happiness. He's quite proud of himself for doing so. You know, he's built his security, his emotional security. Everything about him feels good. And then we come to this. And it's almost like the journey begins. It's the Degas moment. In fact, if you were to take <laughs> just a little rune trivia here. So here you have the Roman numeral 10. New beginnings, new day. But watch what I do here. Degas, new day, right? So basically you see that here, that we have a choice here today to move past some stuff that we've been dealing with. Uh, new information comes in, sort of brings some clarity to the thing. Maybe we got to, you know, break through a little bit here or we have a breakthrough. It, the thorough as could mean that a breakthrough has occurred, not necessarily that we made it happen. We align in inner wisdom. Maybe we seek counsel. Uh, if it's not inside, well, ultimately, we're going to have to take what we've learned from from the counsel that we seek and, and bring it inward and, and process it there, right? So it's kind of a twofold card here with the Hierophant, potentially, anyway. It doesn't have to manifest that way, but potentially. And then we come into, into, into happiness and, and fruition, and we begin a new, a new day here. A new life is beginning, you know, with all the promise and potential. So positive reading, um, Cauda Dr or Caput Draconis uh, reinforces it. Again, new day, new beginnings. On this emotionally intense Monday. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's it. I guess that's enough. Anyway, uh, I got a late start today. It's, it's, uh, it's like 11.35. I have to listen to this first before I post it. So I won't post it till a little bit after noon my time. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. We just overslept. It was like 9.30. I, I, I touched my phone. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Anyway, it's what happens when you're old and, and, and you just, you know, you're home. I don't know. Sometimes sometimes things work out and, you know, you can keep your, uh, I don't know what I did with my fan. Sometimes you can keep your, uh, oh, there it is. You can keep your schedule, you know, some, some, some older people, man, they're up at five in the morning. I don't know. We did that in the original when we first came home, but my husband first retired, but I don't know. It's just too hard. We stay up late. I, you know, we, we do, we stay up late. We watch the first, we watch Stephen Colbert's opening stuff. And sometimes we, we watch more, but usually, so we're in bed by midnight, right. Or later, you know, so it makes sense that we don't get up right away, but still no excuse. It just, it just happened. So anyway, I'm sorry. I will try to do better tomorrow and get this posted sooner. So anyhow, uh, thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate you so much. Check out my blog over at imsteppingaside.com. It's called Stepping Aside. Check that out. Stuff goes up pretty much every day or most days anyway. Um, I do post these there as well on the side panel so that they're over there as well. Um, so I guess that's it. I uh, will see you tomorrow then it, please come back and click subscribe. I'd love you to do that and uh, join our tarot and rune family. No, I don't send you anything. I don't keep lists, nothing like that. If you have an idea about this and you want to include it in the comments, if you have a different interpretation, please share it. We'd love to see it. Uh, this is all about learning. Uh, nobody has all the right answers. Um, I just come here and try to offer my own interpretations. Uh, you know, they're just sort of on the spot readings. I don't, I don't plan any of it. It's just there. And uh, so, you know, I get into a flow and I may forget something really important that, that might be relevant, you know, because I get in a particular flow. So if someone else picks up on something, please say it, you know, it might, it might open something up for somebody reading it that, that maybe I didn't, I wasn't able to do for them, you know, but something you might say might hold the key to something that's been plaguing someone for a long time and might get them thinking in a way that maybe helps resolve whatever they're dealing with. So if you have an idea or an interpretation, put it in the comments. I want to see it. I want, I want to see what you have to say. And I know other people do too. So in any event, see you tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.